Hello, Commanders! Welcome back to the Command Table. I am Mathramar, and we're proceeding with our journey walkthrough. We're going to start the second half of Eldritch Mountains, so we're on Map 3, Battles 311 through 315. Before we get started, though, would you please be so kind as to like, subscribe, and if you want notifications when I drop new videos, be sure to hit that notification bell. Also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave those below. All right, so here we go, battle 311. So for this one, uh, it probably isn't the cleanest setup in the world. What I probably should have done better is to move all of these up to one end. Putting them in the middle, uh, as you'll see, caused a little bit of chaos. I probably should have uh, white flagged it and then restarted. But uh, we've got our assassins. We have um, did the trick where we take them off and put them back on again until we get the right formation. And they're in a very vertical formation, so we've got a nice vertical spread that's going to make it very easy for them to split and to get those two catapults. The storm collar is also good to get, but uh, it's if you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. Um, that's part of the reason why I put my stuff in the middle was to get that storm collar first, but you could uh, switch out some of these melee units for another set of assassins just to guarantee that you get that storm collar. But yeah, I probably would have done that and moved what was left of my melee group up to the top and just blitzed through and then gone from the top to the bottom instead. So we'll show you why I say that. As you'll notice, okay, there goes the catapults. Don't quite get the storm collar because the mass of that earth elemental is closer to the assassins than the storm collar. The storm collar does get taken out by the arcane blade, so those are nice, but look how it's starting to split. So now we've got some going to the top, some going to the bottom. Again, ultimately not a huge deal because we're going to burn through all of it. And even if, you know, one of your groups dies, the other one will probably come in and clean up what's left. So uh, not too terribly difficult. Taking out those catapults was the biggest deal. And the storm collar didn't take too long to go down either. Okay, so for this next one, uh, we've got the note there. Don't blink. <laughs> this one's going to be... Uh, over uh, almost instantaneously. So how I've gone about this one, I've got my four bomb bots up in the front, and that's to take out all three groups of risen, uh, Righteous Defenders and the Paladin. Then I've got my Assassins to take out the Mind Corruptor and then the Valkyrie. Uh, I've got the Wraiths. They're going to cruise along. The bomb bots are going to clear any other distractions before they veer off to the side so they're just going to run straight back and take out those cannoneers and then I've got this set of assassins which actually needs to be down just a little bit to take care of that blessed bomb bot so uh, that's the strategy but uh, again don't blink this is going to be over real fast so here goes okay poof there goes mine corruptor there goes valkyrie Oh, and I did have some crows in there just because I had extra uh, army points, and I thought, you know, those cannoneers are going to be trouble. Why not just stun them? All right, 313. Here we have an uh, enemy set of assassins. We've got four groups of archers and five brutes. So I figured we've got plenty of bomb bots. We've been uh, ramping those up, so why not just blow everything up? We put our strongest bomb bot on the strongest brute. And then uh, the other tricks that I've done, I've got these two assassins. What, they're going to start from either end and work their way towards the middle. Uh, if you put them in the middle, one group might finish before the other, and then they've got a lot of distance to run. So I figured it was best to put them on the ends, let them meet in the middle, and then they'll move their way forward to whatever's left, which shouldn't be much because the bomb bot should take care of everything up front here. So the only thing left is these assassins. So I figured, okay, if there is a brute left or something, I'll have something to hold that. But then I thought, oh, well, why not just make it to where the assassins will run after that earth elemental, and then these wraiths will keep pace with those assassins. So the moment the assassins reveal themselves, it's just a few seconds, they'll get the first hit off on those assassins and kill them very quickly. So again, this one's going to be over very quick, so um, you know, feel free to rewind if you think you missed something. There went all the brutes. There, here comes the assassins. Now all the wraiths are just knocking it out. And the archers did not take long to burn down either. Okay, oops, so we just did this one. Let's skip ahead. Okay, messy, but it worked. Okay, this one, 314. 
We have a lot of crows with their bat skin. We've got two monster hunters, two giant toads, and two groups of war or dire wolves in their warthog skin. Uh, so we've put our thorn guards up front to compensate for all of this melee. Um, the monster hunters are immune to ranged attacks, so uh, we'll just let them beat themselves to death on the thorn guards. We don't have anything to heal them just because uh, it's the, this battle's gonna uh, it's it's gonna take a while, but there's not a whole lot of heavy damage here. So the um, battle drummer is gonna resolve most of the problem that these thorn guards are gonna face. I've got the two crystal spires to take out the crows, and they've got a lot of bodies. Again, whenever you see a ton of crows, you need a lot of targets for them to hit to keep them occupied. The shield bearers are immune to stun. Uh, nothing else is. Uh, hammer throwers used to be, but they're not anymore. But uh, there's just going to be so many bodies that those crows are all going to gravitate right there, and this is all just going to move slightly forward and be right in the center uh, have those crystal spires right in the center to take those down. I like having two crystal spires because if they if the crows stun one of them, there's at least another one up to finish the job. And uh, yeah, let's see. I'm not sure if there's much else to say about this one. Uh, oh, you'll notice that the plague bearers will tag uh, whatever's left with plague, which uh, kind of takes the stuffing out of them and makes them a lot easier to beat down. So there goes the crystal spires. They're burning through a lot of things. Got a lot of bodies there. Okay, we're getting some stuns on the crystal spires, but so many bodies that it's unlikely that they'll be regularly targeted. You'll notice the monster hunter not taking any damage from the crystal spires, but he is now plagued, which slows his attack speed and does damage over time. Okay, so that was 314. Let's do 315 and then we'll call it for this video. All right, for this one, um, something that uh, I neglected to notice until after I initiated the battle, but since I won the battle, I couldn't rewind it and do it again. Um, the uh, untamed beasts will attack the constructs. They will run back and actually attack these. Um, I still have my assassins there just because I was thinking I'm just going to knock them out very quickly and get it over with. Uh, because they will spawn multiple spiders if they're waiting on that untamed beast to kill them. So that's just a note to be aware of. If you want to try a strategy without it, the, the untamed beast will go back and they will destroy those. If you have nothing uh, along this front line, if you have it further back to where those are closer to the untamed beast than whatever you've got on your side. So fairly similar here, just fewer bodies, and we've got our uh, Ember Fiend in to do percentage-based damage because we've got a lot of very high health units between those giant toads and those untamed beasts. The uh, spider's nests, I'm just going to knock those out with the assassins. The thorn guards are going to hold the line. The battle drummer is going to keep uh, the damage uh, mitigated on those thorn guards. The crystal spire is going to do consistent damage on whatever's in range. The druid's going to keep everybody up. Normally I tag the battle drummer onto the crystal spire. But since I've got the druid there, it's not a big deal. She'll heal him every so often. Uh, that should pretty much cover it. Let's go ahead and let it run. All right, notice that un one untamed beast, the closest thing to him was the spider's nest. So now all my assassins are dead. But uh, Oh, and there goes the druid healing the battle drummer. And everything's just beating themselves to death on the thorn guards. Amber Fiend's doing a fantastic job keeping everything tagged with burn. So there it is, the first five levels of the second half, map three. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, please do like and subscribe, and check out the commandtable.com where we have tutorials, we have raid strats, and in the near future we'll have some merchandise and a comic strip. Thanks for watching, we'll have more for you soon.